Hey, this is Eric White. Today I am going to do a deep dive into using the alt chunk approach to assembling documents in OpenXML word processing ML. Alt chunk is a powerful technique for converting content from a variety of formats into OpenXML word processing ML. The easiest way to explain all chunk is to give you a quick demonstration of it. Here is a document, this test.docx, that is all set up to do an alt chunk import. Let's take a look at the markup inside of this document. I'm looking at this document in the OpenXML package editor power tool in Visual Studio 2010. If I expand the word folder, I see in here that we have this af chunk.dat part. Let's take a look at what's in that part. I'm going to export that. I'll export it into the same folder as the test.docx. I'm going to open this and I'm just going to open it with Notepad. And what you can see is that there's a little bit of HTML in this document. There's an HTML element and a body element and an H1 element and a P element. It doesn't really matter for the purposes of the discussion today how simple this HTML is. You can use very complicated HTML and AltChunk will work just fine, but to demonstrate the plumbing of AltChunk, it's better to use simple little examples. Let's close that down. So that's what's in this afchunk.dat. If we look in the document.xml node, we see down here that there is a relationship from document.xml, in other words, the main document part, to this word slash afchunk.dat. And if we look at that, we can see that this relationship has this relationship ID of alt chunk ID 1, and the source is the main document part, in other words, word slash document.xml, and the target is word slash af chunk dot dat. And the type of this relationship, the relationship type is this af chunk relationship type that you can see right here. Now let's look at the markup in the main document part. I'll format the XML. And what we can see is here we have the main document element and underneath that the body element as usual. And we have a paragraph element up here. This paragraph element has a bit of text in there. It says on the insert tab, et cetera, et cetera. And now we can see this W colon alt chunk element here, and it has an R ID of that same relationship ID, alt chunk ID one. One more point about that. If I look at this af chunk dot DAT, we can see the content type down here. The content type here is application slash HTML plus XML. And that is all of the plumbing necessary in order to get alt chunk to work. What we have is we have the element in the main document body part. It has a relationship ID. The relationship ID refers to the relationship to the alt chunk part. That relationship has this AF chunk relationship type. The AF chunk part has the HTML in it, and the content type is set to this particular value. Now what happens is that when I open this document now, I see, first of all, I see that paragraph that we saw in the markup for the main document body part, and here we can see the HTML as it has been converted and inserted into the document. Now, here's the magic. If I come over here and I do file and I save as, and I'm going to save this as test2.docx. Let's close this. And let's look at test2.docx in the OpenXML package editor power tool. And what we see is the alt chunk part is gone now. And if we look underneath the main document body part, there is no relationship to it, of course, because the alt chunk part is gone. And if I look in that main document body part, format the XML, and that AF chunk element is gone, and it has been replaced with ordinary 
paragraph markup, these W colon P elements that have W colon R elements underneath them, and so on. On my MSDN blog that I had when I used to be an employee at Microsoft, there is this blog post, How to Use Alt Junk for Document Assembly. This blog post contains the smallest possible example to implement alt chunk functionality. If we drop down here, we can see this example, and this basically contains the entire example. This takes a document, inserts an alt chunk element, inserts the alt chunk part, creates the right relationship, and then saves that document. This example, the first example, shows how to do alt chunk where you are importing another docx. If we drop down a little bit here, this shows the example to import alt chunk that is stored as HTML. And this is the code that created the document that I showed you just now. Let me show you what that code looks like when we run it. First of all, I'm going to create a new document, a new Word document, call it test. I'll open this document and I'll insert a single paragraph with a single sentence in it. And there we have our paragraph with our sentence in it. Save it and close it. Here I have the little example that I took from the MSDN blog. And this example inserts that alt chunk as HTML, and it inserts the alt chunk element. So if I run it, it runs and quits very quickly. We can then look at that test.docx, and sure enough, we can see the AF chunk in there. And if we were to look in the main document body part, we can see the alt chunk element. And we could open and save this, and you would see the results that I showed you previously. Also on my MSDN blog, there is this blog post that lists the supported formats for alt chunk. You can find this list in the OpenXML standard. I got all that information out of the standard and consolidated it to make it just a little bit easier to get to. One of the interesting points about alt chunk is that you can, for instance, import a docx that contains images, and that'll import just fine. You can also import HTML, and that'll import just fine. But if that HTML contains references to other images, those images are external, and there's no way for the alt chunk processing code to go find those images. You can't import HTML in that form and import an image. But there is something else that we can do to do that. You'll notice this MHT format here that has this content type of message slash RFC 822. Well, let's go exercise that and see what that looks like. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here. This is the alt chunk blog post. And I'm going to do a file and save as in Internet Explorer, and I'll call this altchunk.mht, and I'll save that. That's a single file web page is what the nomenclature is for that. Here's that file. If I were to open it, I see it looks like this, and it's got uh, all of those images directly in that MHT. If I open this with Notepad, here we can see the MHT content. And if I drop down far enough, eventually we'll see some base64 encoded ASCII. And these are those images. So everything is embedded in a single file here, both the HTML and the images. Now I'm going to take this MHT, put it in the same directory as this test.docx. So we have the MHT and we have this test.docx here. I'm going to pull in test.docx into the OpenXML package editor power tool. Now I'm going to add a new part. And the part is going to be altchunk.dat. And the content 
type is going to be message slash RFC 822. And I'm going to import that alt chunk dot MHT. And let's go make sure that our relationship here is still correct. We have the alt chunk ID relationship. We have it go pointing at word slash AF chunk dot DAT. Let's see if I can rename this. I'll have to reimport this. It should be AF chunk dot DAT. So let's and I'll import that alt chunk dot MHT again. So now I've got a name of AF chunk dot DAT document has a relationship to word slash af chunk dot dat. It has a relationship type of af chunk. And af chunk dot dat has a content type of message slash rfc 822. So let's save that. And now let's open it. And when we open it, we can see we did in fact open that content and we do have those images in that content. It's a little bit messy because I didn't take the pains to create this MHT exactly as I wanted it to be. I just took whatever I got when I did file save as single file web page in Word. So there's a little bit of messy stuff up here at the top where all of the various other parts of that web page are stored. But anyway, this shows the idea that you can use the MHT format to import images that you have in HTML. So you have to do a conversion from the HTML to MHT. There are programs out there to do this conversion. You can go and search on the web to find those. I've also written a couple of little programs. It's pretty simple. If you Look at the MHT format, it's really very simple. Last but not least is I showed how you can do the expansion of the alt chunk content using Word. And you can also use the expansion of alt chunk content to ordinary word processing ML using Word automation services. Here is this test.docx that is not expanded. We can see it over here. It's the alt chunk has not been transformed into ordinary word processing ML. I'm going to go into this team site and I'm going to browse for that file and upload that document. So there we have it in that document library in SharePoint. And here I have a little small Word Automation Services program. I took this program basically verbatim from a MSDN article. Let me show you. Here's an article on MSDN. You can find it at this link. I took this first example and I modified it slightly. This example opens test.docx and saves it as a different file name. In the example that you'll find in this article, it saves it as test.pdf. But if I look at the example here, I changed it to save it first of all as save format.document instead of PDF. And next I changed it to save it as test2.docx right here. And I also changed this to point to the appropriate site URL for the SharePoint site that I'm running on. And I'll run this little example. And it runs and completes. Go back to my team site and we'll wait for about 30 seconds or a minute for Word Automation Services to do its magic. And there we can see it. There's the test 2 document that was created by Word Automation Services. 
and I'll download a copy of that document. I'll do file and save as, save it as test2. Let's look at test2.docx in OpenXML Package Editor Power Tool. And we can see that the alt chunk part is gone, and instead we have now this document.xml that contains all of the markup that was necessary for that conversion of fairly complicated HTML to word processing ML. I'll format that XML and we can see there's all of that word processing ML. And if I were to look at this document, I see the same thing that I would have seen if I opened and saved it using the Word client application. All of the images are in there and they're converted to Word processing ML. That's all I'm going to cover in this video. See you next time.